ISOs are a particularly useful tool that can really help you with your photography. They're very often overlooked and misunderstood. So let me take you back for a minute to the days of film. Do you remember you used to have 100 and 200 and 400 speed films going all the way up to 1000 and beyond? It was called a fast film if you had a 1200 and a slow film if it was a 100 or even a 50. People often mistakenly thought that if you had a fast film, it was for photographing a fast moving object like a racing car and a slow film would be for a slow moving object like a snail or a slug or something. Actually what it was referring to was the speed at which the film reacted to light. The faster the film, the faster the film reacted. Here's how it worked. You know how silver tarnishes? You put a silver jug in the window or something like that and it will start to change colour. Well there's silver inside film. In the slower films you had very very fine grains of silver like these, these little pebbles here. And when the light hit them it took a lot more light to make them react. But your picture was a very fine grained and fine detailed picture because it was shot on a slow film, slow speed. With the higher ISO numbers, you had grain like golf balls because there were bigger grains of silver in the film. And it's the same with your digital SLR camera. The higher you put your ISO number, the more sensitive the pixels on your sensor become. But you also then start to get grain appearing in the picture. So, supposing you want to take photographs of, I don't know, close up macro shots of flowers, you want to be using a low ISO number, very, very fine grained, like these little pebbles here. If you want to start shooting in low light, then you want to be using the higher ISO number. Let me show you what I mean. As you can see, I've got Lorna standing in the gloom here, because I really like the shape of this architecture, and it's a brilliant place to take a portrait. But I expect you can also see it's really pretty dark. Now, to demonstrate how the ISO can brighten up your picture, I'm going to set a manual exposure. I'm not going to let the camera change my exposure at all. All I'm going to do is take the same picture over and over again using different ISOs. So let's begin. I've set a 250th at f5.6. If you don't know what that means, don't panic about it right now. I've set a 200. ISO. I'm doing it, not the camera, it's not auto, it's me. So, how's our supermodel? Here we go, let's get some of these lovely... Here we go. Lorna's really dark, you can kind of see something going on in there, but there's not a lot. If I pump the ISO from 2 to 400, I'm doubling it, I'm making the sensor twice as sensitive, so it'll be twice as bright. Let's go again. Here we go, moody Lorna. She's a bit brighter. I'm going to up it to 800. Take the same picture. Yep, we're starting to see Lorna now. You've got the idea. I'm going to speed this on up. Let's go to 2000 ISO, which is a really, really high ISO. Get our shot. Here we go. Fantastic. Lovely, beautiful, bright portrait in nice light with lovely arches and shapes. Now, as you know, that's going to be grainy, but it doesn't really matter. It's, it's still a nice picture and the grain will almost kind of add something to it. But something else to watch for when you're using very, very high ISOs is noise. Noise is different to grain. Noise are funny little coloured pixels which appear in the shadow area. Sometimes they're blue, sometimes they're black. This tends to happen on DSLRs probably costing less than 500 pounds. It kicks in about 400 ISO. On this camera, thankfully, it isn't an issue. Here's another way to use your ISO. You're in a restaurant, you can have an amazing meal with one of your bestest friends. You want to take a picture to remind yourself of what a great time you're having. You turn on the flash, and you take a picture. Well, yeah, it's a memory, but the light's really harsh. It's not that nice at all. So what can you do about it? Switch the flash off. Go into your camera menu, change the ISO, just push it up a bit higher. In this case, I'm going to go to 400, because we're sitting near a window. There's a bit of light coming in. The flash is off. I'm going to take the same picture all over again. That is just so much nicer. 
because the light's kinder and we've got a bit of what's going on in the background instead of darkness. Another useful tip for ISOs.